Usa, papa, usa, papa, usa, papa, usa. Don't make us mad, video games, but make me mad, video games. Make me so <laughs> mad. PKO, your ears been bit. <laughs>so i'm a t what do you call it a patty connoisseur it? yes also an aficionado don't they have one for like wines too what, what are they called the ones a sommelier yeah sommelier which i i thought it was like an ethnicity when i first heard it <laughs> <laughs> i was it's like oh it's someone from somalia it's too close <laughs> it is see i like tea but um i feel like i hit tea hard when i'm like <laughs> sick <laughs> <laughs> uh but when i'm not sick i tend to not really have much tea like i might get like a chai latte or something like that mm. uh, but i tend to just gravitate towards coffee but since when if i'm sick i try to avoid coffee because it doesn't always help so then i go more towards tea i, I like more of your citrus or like a like vanilla like that type of I'm not mm -hmm. big onto the really fruity teas like blueberry and mango tea and all the other stuff. Me neither. Oh. I like, I want it to be kind of like a dessert ish sort of like with vanilla and stuff in it. And that, yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. We're on the same tea length, tea wavelength, the tea leaf. The same tea. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Marie Plays It All. Today's episode is Side Quest with Jose. Side quest, my first appearance on the side quest. I'm so excited. I kind of pictured it like this was like a video game and you were like just kind of going on your uh, Marie plays it all journey. And then I happened to be standing by a tree in the corner like, hey, stranger, can you use your help? <laughs> and you Perfect. came over and we went on the side quest. <laughs> That's exactly what I was envisioning. But you know what though, Jose? You wouldn't be like, a dumb npc you would be like what do they call it like someone that you pick up on a side quest and they're like your companion yeah. you know you can like choose companions and stuff yeah pick you to go on missions with me duh yeah and hold my own while we're going on oh yeah missions. yeah i wouldn't have to like worry about going ahead and then you're like spinning around glitched against a wall walking towards <laughs> a wall constantly that'd be me more so you <laughs> shooting a tree instead of the actual enemies like what are you doing <laughs> would be me i know i'm sorry anyway jose brought up this wonderful uh idea for an episode and we are both gamers and he brought this idea and why don't you tell everybody what your idea was that you brought to me idea was i as anyone who plays video games there's always going to be things that you love that you want them to do more and then there's always going to be things that you absolutely hate across multiple games and you're like i wish they would stop doing this so he was like why don't we talk about some of the things that we personally uh feel video games should do more of because we love it and what things they should stop immediately because it absolutely grinds our gears you know it's so funny that you use that exact term because i thought of a, i thought of some things and i was like well this isn't what this isn't like you don't have to stop doing this but it really grinds my gears and that's the exact <laughs> that's it you know it really grinds my gears that's yeah. the exact terminology that i was gonna say too these things are like having a wet sock for me where it's like it's not the end of the world but i i ooh, i really don't like wet socks i don't know do you wear like boot type shoes in the winter yeah yeah I mean, you have to right do you ever wear ankle socks mm -hmm. and then when they get stuck oh. underneath and it just keeps sliding oh. down Ooh, that's an equivalent of a wet sock to me i think they're both terrible it's like oh well it's in there it's down i can feel it on my <laughs> arch and it's like rubbing you're like damn it and, and anyone that comes from a wintry area knows you know you have to really tighten those boots you know especially if you're gonna go out to shovel or something like that so to fix that sock is such an ordeal where you have to untie it, take it off, pull it back up, only to have it go down like 10 seconds later. These are the type of things we're going to complain about. Things that just really grind our gears and give us like irks. And I know and I know one of yours because you've talked to me about it before and it's in your name. But <laughs> more, before we talk about what we like and what we don't like and what we want to keep seeing and not seeing, 
let me ask you how long have you been playing video games for what kind of video games are your favorite type of games to play and what do they mean to you jose oh man i for pretty much my entire life i've been playing video games as early as i was able to convince my parents to get me a system uh and that was the original nintendo and since then I've been playing and, you know, I went Nintendo, Super Nintendo, uh, then when like the, I had Sega, then when the PlayStation came out, I've had every iteration of the PlayStation uh, from the first all the way through now. And then I had an Xbox once and then they, I got that ring of death once and I was like, I'm oh, yeah. done with you forever, Xbox. Uh, so I've been playing forever. Uh, majority of my games that I tend to gravitate to is... For random play, I like sports games because it's one of those things where you can always play. It's repetitive, but it's fun. But I tend to gravitate to story-based games, single-player story-based games. Uh, those are ones that I tend to be best at. I enjoy the most. Uh, you know, some that I don't. Well, that I'm not good at are like fighter fighting games. Like Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, or hmm. m most first-person shooters, I am terrible at. Um, I'll play some like I like Destiny, but it's it's not my forte at all. I'm not gonna be carrying the team in those games. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be an Ashley in those games. <laughs> That's except for Destiny, right? Because you you yes. you love Destiny. I did. The gameplay was just so good and so smooth. Uh, you know, out of first-person shooters, that one probably has some of the best gameplay that there is. Just the freedom you have with your character and how you can move. Uh, you know, the abundance of weapons. But then there's also a story there. You know, it has a very extensive lore, uh, which is what mm -hmm. brings me in, is wanting to know you know, what's the next part of the story or how things are going to link up. If it didn't have that aspect of the story, I probably would not have lasted seven plus years, you know, playing Destiny. And how many hours? Ooh, what, what, what was it? I think I was, wasn't that like over 1400 or something like that when they send you it? Like, to no, you were over like, because I'm at 1600 for Overwatch and you were higher with Destiny. Oh, oh wait. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because I, I think I was just looking at Destiny 2. Between Destiny 2 and 1, yes. Uh, more hours than I probably should have been on. You know, uh, shameful hours. It's so yeah. that. See, I don't, I never, I don't look at it as being shameful or being like a waste of time or anything. I mean, everyone has their things they like to do in their spare time. And people like read, watch movies. And, and video games get such a bad rap. And I'm like, I mean, a video game is like you're reading and you're watching movies at the same time and you're in control. So what? I agree with you. Like, I'm, I'm joking, but I do agree with you. Like, I feel it's <laughs> not really a problem or a big deal unless you're really like not doing anything else. Like, yeah. You know, like, that's like mm -hmm. what you're doing. But, you know, as long as you're a functional sure. member of society and your yeah. life is not falling apart, what's wrong with going in there? You know, I would I would work. I would, you know, I, I, I played football and basketball on my, like, free time. Mm -hmm. I ha I would do all these little things. And then, you know, I'd get to my relaxation time, my weekends, my nights during that time. And next thing you know, it's four in the morning. We still haven't beat that boss. And we're half passing out, but we're not giving up. It teaches you persistence and perseverance. And, oh, yeah. Okay. I've been playing video games ever since I... I don't know, I was like four, I guess. My first consoles were the Intellivision and the ColecoVision. And then I played a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Like back, like back, back. My dad was in the video games, like from the moment they were invented. So I was kind of like raised with that. And then I got really into PC adventure games like King's Quest and Space Quest and Leisure Suit Larry and Monkey Island. Those are all like my childhood. And then obviously Nintendo and Super Nintendo. I never owned a Sega, but, and then all that. And then PlayStation and Xbox, everything like Switch. So my whole life too has been very, video games have been very involved with family members, my grandpa, my cousins, my aunties and uncles, my parents. It was just like, it was a way, it was just a part of life. I have to say that 
I am like you. I'm more like a story based adventure type second life <laughs> video <laughs> game type person more like engrossing and more with a story. I'm not good at first person shooters. The only game like that I play really is Overwatch, but I feel like Overwatch is so like bubbly and simplified and just mm. easy. So that's why I'm okay at it. That's I am the same as you. Like first person shooters, I'm like aiming over here when I should be over here. I'm I still, I'm not good. <laughs> uh that that's awesome though. See, see that was that was the difference between you and me there is um, I was the first gamer out of like my family name, mm-hmm. so my parents didn't grow up with that. So it took until me being able to convince them, like, hey, buy me the system before I was able to get it. Well, you know, you had access to it right away because your father was a gamer. That's awesome. Uh, you know, that's something like you were able to share with like your father and kind of grow into it. That's that's amazing. I owe a lot to like my dad for like my nerdiness and everything like that and my older brother. But yeah, it, video games have been like an emotional thing. Like my grandpa used to watch me every single lunch hour playing video games at his house and he'd be sitting on his chair watching me and rooting me on and it's like get emotional about it, man. Video games are important. It's funny. I know uh, something I read about uh, the other day that I think you might be interested in because you played all those very old like video games. Mm-hmm. Um Supposedly, uh, Atari, which surprisingly is still around the brand, uh, people are wondering what they're doing because they've been slowly buying off rights for all these old 80s and 90s games, but then they haven't revealed what they're doing with those. So everyone's kind of like, wait a second, you got my attention, Atari. What is the end game here? Why are you buying all of these rights from old a lot of it is uh, rights to their old games that they had themselves um right. so we're curious like are they planning to release something like what are what are they what is the goal here jose is hitting us with a current event right now <laughs> yeah <laughs> You're doing, yes yes crossover yes <laughs> i i didn't know that i didn't know that they were doing that and i now i'm like ooh, what is ooh. It'd be yeah. smart if they if they were Atari. Like, Atari yes. watching. He you. sees you. He sees you. <laughs> Why don't we start with you, Jose? Do you want to start with a do or don't? What you don't want to see happen anymore or something that you do like seeing? You know, I'm gonna start with the don't just because I have one more don't than I have do's. So okay. might as well do that. All right. So okay. the first don't keep it nice and simple, you know. I mentioned I really enjoy single player story games. Uh, mm-hmm. This has created one of the biggest uh, modern nuisances, wet socks feelings that I've had is why do single player games have to be online? Like, why do you need to have online connection for single player games when I just want to play by myself here? If my if your server goes down. I can't play a single player game when I don't have to connect with anyone else. Like, why? Por qué? At least give us the option to do either. Like, this is actually one of mine too, because I keep going, keep going. You know, it it was that because I've run into it before uh, with single player games where all of a sudden uh, it's nothing on my end. My internet's good, it's good to go. Uh, Their server crashes or they get hacked and something happens to their server. And now, you know, I can't play that day, sometimes multiple days until they fix stuff on their end, their end, where growing up, you had a single player game. It was isolated. It was contained uh, in there. So mm. you can play it at any point in time. That's the whole point of single player games. I want no involvement with anyone else for this game. Just let me play. Yes. Thank you. See, this is how I felt about Fallout 76 because Fallout 76 is like online and there's all other online people on there. And I'm like, I don't, I, I don't want that. It doesn't, first of all, it doesn't feel like a Fallout game to me really. And I'm just in there and then there's like other people online going, I'm like, no, just let me do my quest. Like I'm trying to quest here. And I I don't know. That's why I like with Skyrim, like the Elder Scroll games, I don't know what's going to happen with the new Elder Scroll game that's going to come out whenever they finally release it. But they had Skyrim and then they released Elder Scrolls online, but they were separate. So like Skyrim's not online at all, but they're like, oh, let's do an online one too. Keep it separate at least. Like if they came out with a new Fallout game that was just by itself 
and then also Fallout 76, then fine. But no, it's like, no, you're forcing me. Stop forcing us to be online. No, exactly. And I think that what you mentioned, that's the perfect like compromise. Because I have seen games that have done that where it's like, you don't need to be online to play the game. But you have the ability to connect to online so, you know, you can get your progress, like, tracked and get certain rewards for achieving certain things in the game. Uh, and, and that's a good option. Like, I don't mm -hmm. mind that part. Or if you want to do, like, a leaderboard. But don't make it that I'm left without a choice if something goes wrong on your end. That, that's yes. my wet sock. Hear oh. us, video game companies. Oh. Hear us. The thing is, a younger generation of gamers, it just like grows up with this and they don't even like it doesn't matter to them. But then we're like, no, wait a second. This doesn't feel like our game anymore. Like when you involve like all the online stuff, it feels like there's like an outside source in control. And you're like, no, I want to be in control. I am the captain. Yeah, yeah I'm the captain now. Well, no, not anymore. They took our captain hood ahead. They're telling us that. They're like, we're like, we're the captain now. I remember when I played the first uh, Mass Effect. Uh, so this whole concept of your decision making affecting the story to that capacity going forward was was new to me overall. So I got to like my first tough decision where I had to pick who was going to live and who was going to die. And these are like my two companions. Uh, it was tough. I, I paused the game at that point and I walked away and I tried to come back. And I just still couldn't decide. I went about my life. I went to school the next morning. The game was paused this whole time and off. No. You know, don't tell my mom. Probably not the best for the electricity bill. But I left it on because <laughs> I could not uh I could not decide. And I couldn't save it at that point either. And I could not decide at all. If this was a game that forced you to be online. Yes. And their server went down. I would have lost all that progress and would not have been able to do that at all. So right. that's an example of like things that I was able to do with these games that I can't do these days for the most part because of that obligation. Question is, who did you save, Caden or Ashley? Yes, I saved Ashley. I was like... I was like, oh, well, I'm gonna make her my love interest, so I might as well like save her. Uh, I it would it wouldn't work it out if she's dead. People might look at my character weird. So one of my biggest don'ts is, and it's all probably just because I'm old and I don't understand it. But like, I hate season passes so much because the screen loads, and I'm like, what is all this? And then my son is like just almost 10 years old he's like oh it's a season pass you do this and blah, blah blah and i'm like what do you do so you have to pay for a season pass every month but then you also have to pay on top of that for like certain skins but you can only get those certain skins if you pay for the season pass but if you pay for season pass then you can pay for these skins and some of the skins are like 25 dollars, and it's insane like so i'll use it overwatch as, as an example so overwatch one Back in the day, you had loot boxes. And if you wanted to, you could purchase loot boxes, but you also won them for progressing and leveling up, okay? And they gave you skins and everything. And it was like, oh, like a little like nice surprise. Oh, what I get my loot box? And it was always fun. But then they're like, oh, so loot boxes is making kids want to gamble. And I'm like, BS. You just want to put a season pass in there and make even more money. And then now it's like, hey, if you don't have enough money to pay for all these skins that are awesome, then the kids feel like left out. Like, well, I want the shredder skin. I'm like, dude, it's $25. You're not getting it. Well, they have it. Like, it's worse. If they, I find it overwhelming. Why do we have to pay to get certain maps, to get certain things? Just let us all be able to have it. Let us strive to get it by leveling up instead of you have to buy it and it's just for purchase. There's no other way to get it, but to throw money at it. At least maybe if I got to a certain level or got a certain achievement and I can unlock it, then fine. And if people didn't want to wait for that or strive for that, they can pay for it. But no, you have to pay for it. Dumb, yeah. rude. <clears throat> I agree with you a hundred percent on this. And there's such a manipulation like to it 
uh, overall. So you'll get like the season pass, and they'll 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 paint it as a way of like, oh, this is a way for people to earn stuff without paying instead of buying the stuff. But you have to pay for the season pass to have the ability to earn things for free, which isn't free anymore because you technically paid uh, for that. Or so Destiny, the gameplay for all, they never had a, a season pass. You would just have like mm-hmm. DLCs and things you earned this. Um, a couple of years ago, maybe a little bit longer, they introduced season pass every like DLC. So they don't make you pay separately for the season pass. As long as you buy the DLC, you get the season pass. But mm-hmm. at the beginning, they would just put crap in there. Yeah. So you would earn things, but it was like all the best stuff they still put behind the paywall. So it's just more like, hey, no, look, we're giving you free stuff. Be happy, be satisfied. But it, you're just getting the bottom of the barrel. You're getting like the the armor that's going to be outdated by the time you earn it. Uh, you know, you're getting the uh, yeah the visual skin that is not even the coolest visual skin. Uh, so they just kind of throw in the scraps to like keep you satisfied and say they gave you something, so then they can justify charging on this end. Like, no, we got for both people the the people that want to pay and the people who want it for free. So it's all a scam. It is a scam. I understand people buying season passes and everything like that, and and it's it's it can be fun to get the skins, but then at the same time, it's just like not every I I I just refuse. Okay. I'll be paying Overwatch. I'm like, oh, look at this skin. It's so nice. And then they're like, yeah, we need the season pass for that. I'm like, well, that's it. I'm not doing it. I'm not going to get season pass. Just get it. Or I'm like, oh, that skin was nice. Oh, that was last season. And I'm like, okay. So there's like different seasons that come out. And then if you don't get it now, then you'll never get it again. And I'm like, okay, you know what? Let me do what I want. Oh, no. Yes. They play off of FOMO so much. Yes. They, They know that FOMO is strong. And they use that against people when they throw out things like that. It's it's now or never. Uh, and again, I hate to go back to Destiny, but like I played that for so long. And they did some of these things. But they had this thing called sunsetting, which is uh, when they got to like a certain time, they would remove some old content, some old weapons, some old armor. They would sunset it and put it into a vault. They said mm. it's because they need to keep the memory under control because it's already like one point like four point two gigs or something for the game. So it's saying it's that. But then, you know, anyone who didn't earn it, they can't get it again until they re-release it in the future in another DLC to have people earn back what they already had in the past, but it's no longer applicable because they got sunset. And that does affect the kids the most because you know they're they're at that social age where, you know, you mm. need to have the same thing your peers have. Because if not, you're left out. That's the conversation piece with it. You know, if they start talking about the new stuff and you don't have it, not only are you left out, can you not contribute to that conversation? But then kids are mean to to, to, yes. each other, to everyone else. So then it comes like, oh, you don't have it. Oh, why don't you have it? You know, loser, blah, 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 blah. Like you get all that aspect of it. And they know that they don't care because it's the extra money. It's That's what's going to support them. Uh, the season pass today is what like a starter jacket or an Adidas tracksuit was to us back in school. It's like, oh, you don't have this jacket. And then you're like, oh, mom, I want an Adidas tracksuit. And if you don't have it, then you're a loser. Oh, I want a Tamagotchi. I want a fidget spinner. I want some pogs. And if you don't have it, you're a loser. Hate you, season passes. Hate you. Oh, oh so terrible. Terrible choice. And unfortunately, it's it's not going to, it's not going to stop. My next one, actually, it's not too far off of yours Ooh. for, for okay. the dad. Um, is the daily like login objectives that now <laughs> they started to do with a lot of games? Um, yeah. And my my problem with this is when they, okay, daily login, okay, fine, you just gotta log in. But when they add an objective to it, and usually it's not different objectives, it's the same tedious thing that you have to go in and do on a daily basis in order for you to earn something. Uh, mm-hmm. And a lot of times it's to earn something that's going to help you competitively 
So if you don't do it, then you kind of fall behind a mm. little bit. I know some games might do it with like skins or something like that, but I know, um, you know, in like the sports game, you can do it towards earning cards, which are players that make your team better. Uh, oh. I know in like Destiny, they do it where you can uh, earn XP. You can also earn certain things. So it ends up being competitive aspects that you're earning, but it makes it feel like a job. And I don't play video games to, I have a job already. I work. There's already tedious things I have to do on a daily basis in life and work. I don't want video games to become tedious like that. So to tell me that to, for me to get something that's going to make my gameplay more enjoyable, I have to log in every single day and do the same tedious, repetitive, mindless task over and over again, uh, even if I'm not playing that game that day. But I have to do it now because I don't want to miss out. Ugh, that like really annoys me because now you you're pulling out of my enjoyment enjoyment now it's not an option per se it's not an escape anymore it, when you ha make something like mandatory or it makes you feel like it should be mandatory in order to get certain things and objectives and it's like well you're taking the f joy and fun out of, out, out of it really it's like I, I already have a life and i want to escape this life to play video games for fun i don't want to be like oh Got to go to work in my game now, get my dailies. <laughs> gotta, yeah. If I want to progress a little bit, if I want to get this, uh, want to get this gun that everyone else has and I need to have is like, okay, well, I gotta, I can't go out tonight, guys. I gotta get my dailies. I, yeah. I just have to, like, that's what it feels like. Yeah. It, it should never, it should never be like, I need to go into my game and do this. It should be, I want to go into the game and do this. And that's mm -hmm. what this, it's creating that need aspect of it which again for me ruins video games and you know we played before this era and stuff so we know the difference that's probably why it annoys us more while yes. the kids that grew up in this era in gaming where this is the standard it might not be that big of a deal for them but it's also taking advantage of, of them on top of that it's adding that like obsession with having to do this again to stay up to date. I think a lot of our don'ts and things that we don't like are because we're seasoned gamers and <laughs> we're used to a certain way of how it used to be. Which brings me to my next one. With online gaming, I find that they are making everything too fair and too, they don't want anyone to get offended in these video games and they don't want anyone to feel left out in ways so the way i'm or they, there's nothing to strive for anymore they're taking like your um like persistence and your your pride of like beating something or like being good or being at the top they're taking that away so that everyone's just like equal and base but there's nothing to like strive for anymore so my example is this again i'm going to use overwatch just because that game has really changed and uh for the worse in my opinion so when you first would play, you'd have medals and you'd see if you have, were a gold medal in kills, gold medal in healing, gold medal in um, damage done. You'd see if you were like at the top and now they took away all the medals. So you can't see if you're better than anyone else. Um, you used to be on fire in the game. If you had like a good kill streak or I'm the healer, if you were healing really well, they took that away. So you can't see if anyone else is on fire. Uh, they took away in, in Overwatch showing if you're on a team with people because i guess it, people got offended who weren't on a team with friends so now you can't even tell who is a teammate who's not they took away where when you play a map you get to play the same team right afterwards so they took away the competitive aspect so it's like once you're done a map you're done yet you move on to something else so you can't have like a just like a competition um, i guess but yeah yeah like that intense you, like battle yeah you don't have that anymore like we people would be like trash talking like we're gonna get you this time blah 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 and they, that's gone there's yeah. nothing anymore to strive for in overwatch except for like just like winning the match but like personally you're not like oh man i got gold i have pictures that i took i'm like look at all my gold medals like you get so proud and they, they, they're taking that all away there's nothing to strive for there's no passion anymore it's just like oh we won the match oh yeah but like how did i do 
that's want to personally be better yeah that's the uh, it's the participation award effect here where it's like everyone needs to feel like they're they're part of it and not lesser and i agree with you 100 percent with that uh things like that that are being removed from games that takes away the accolades it's like give me my flowers i want my accolades i earned my accolades at all and i want everyone to see my accolades but then also when it comes to the changes and like gameplays and things like that you know i've seen it in sports games i've seen it again going back to destiny just because it's been around so long and it's like one of the tops in its genre um mm-hmm. but you know they'll they'll like nerf things or they'll increase yeah. other things or they'll uh do sandbox changes in order to make things easier for the general like basic like random gamer uh Mm -hmm. overall so try to put them on the equal playing field so it's easier to just to pick up and smash buttons compared to the people that play it all the time and again in in those games i'm not the strongest player when it comes to those games but don't give me a handicap basketball i started playing like when i was like in high school and i played but i used to always play with my uncle from when i was like in elementary school and he would beat the crap out of me all the time no mercy for years elementary school high school it wasn't until like my second year of college that i came back to town you know at this point i had got i was taller than him i had been playing more while i was in college and i was like all right we're gonna face off now and i finally beat him after what 15 plus years of playing finally beat him that felt so good because he never gave me a handicap he never took it easy he never tried to level the playing field he was like when you beat me it's going to be you beating me not me letting you win and that felt great like i don't mind like struggling because it it motivates me to get better to learn how to use a, a weapon better how to strategize better so then when i win i know i earned that win and when mm-hmm. they make these changes trying to not make anyone feel bad and everyone's a participant and everyone gets a lollipop and let's make it easy for everyone. I feel it cheapens the wins at, yeah. at, at all, at all costs. So when you do win, did you really win or did they hand you the win because they made it easier for you? Did they handicap the person who is better than you? And that's why you won. Cause they, they do that. I, I remember seeing people complaining about, Oh, they need to change the matchup system on some of these games because sometimes you get paired against someone who's really good. And if yes. you're bad, you should only play really bad people. Well, how, what are you going to learn playing bad people? You know, it's the blind leading the blinds. You're going to learn playing people that are better than you. Right. And see, that's the thing, too. Like, another thing they took away, too, is like, I think they took away our levels. Like, they'd show the levels of people when you go into a match. And I remember we get put up against like platinum and diamond people, and I was like a silver or whatever. And they're like, oh man, it's going to be tough. I'm like, let's go. Let's, let's, let's show these diamond players and we're gonna we're gonna school them and we when we did it was like the best feeling it was like yes we did it diamond players suck it like it was it felt so much better and it wasn't just because i threw money at a freaking season pass or like whatever to get an extra good gun it was because we earned it and we played for so long and that's why it was so good like what if you were just able to buy some power-ups and then you were able to beat your uncle i was like huh, look i beat you because i got special powers because i spent money no it was because you worked at it he taught you to be better and you were better and you did it yourself and then you had the pride true victory that is true don't take away our true victories here okay i don't want a head start all right go put my competition right here next to me and if i have to lose a hundred times i'm gonna at some point at least make it competitive because i'm not i'm gonna keep going but if i know that i'm only catching up to you because you got lowered down or I was given a handicap, then it just, it doesn't feel the same. It takes away the enjoyment from me personally. Yes. I feel the, the passion's coming. Okay. <laughs> well, while I'm in the passionate stage right now, I'll, I'll go on to my next bad one. And this goes with my name and that is dumb, idiotic, incompetent, 
useless waste of space why are you here can i shoot you myself ai companions when it comes to these caves yeah now <laughs> we have them across multiple games the main reason this is fresh in my mind is because i've recently been playing the resident evil 4 remake okay. and for big chunks of it uh, you know, the whole concept of is is you are going into this island to rescue and save uh, the president's daughter who has been kidnapped. So for chunks of this game, you're with her as you're trying to get her off of the island. And oh my god, there has been nothing more frustrating in this game than the scenes that I'm with her. It's like, you know, if I'm going to die, if I'm going to mess up and get killed, okay. I will take it. But if I'm going to lose my progress and die because the stupid AI companion is doing God knows what in the background instead of following me, that's on you. That's not on me. That's wet socks right there. <laughs> oh, wait. One part where I have to pretty much lead her through hordes of enemies in there and they'll try to capture her and like walk away with her or they'll incapacitate her where she just like lies on the ground and you have to go up to her and like revive her basically so i'll find the perfect path and i'm like weaving through i'm like all right come with me and i get to the gate to end and i look back i'm like where the hell are you where did you go and then i hear Leah! in the background and i have to run back through that horde again just to see her getting carried away out the back. And then now it's uh, game over because I let her get taken away. Or when there's a, there's a part there where she has to do a task and there's em enemies coming and you have to pretty much be her cover and you have to shoot people while you're at it. They come near her and instead of trying to avoid her, she just kind of goes down on the knee and she's like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. It's like, where's your self-preservation? Stop staring at the wall and run. Damn it, Ashley. Why do you got kidnapped? You didn't nerf it. Yeah. Like, have her. I, I'm not going to lie. I might have purposely shot her and uh, gamed over once because I got so annoyed when she didn't follow me for the third time and got captured. And mm -hmm. I threw a grenade and just blew everyone up in there. And I know it made me restart that part. But it was worth it for at least that second of like, oh, Ashley. You don't want to babysit in a video game. Again, that's too like real life almost. Like I'm not a babysitter. <laughs> I'm not getting paid for this. I should be getting paid for this. Pay me. Where's my season pass to protect this bee? Yeah. Like honestly, <laughs> I have a third one. It might be a little controversial a little bit, but- Bring it on, I, bring it on. Right? Okay, and I'll, I'll use an example because I can. I think we need to keep political agendas out of video games, 100%. I want to escape. I don't want to have stuff that's happening in real life, in the world, in politics, brought in to video games. I find it pandering. I find it disingenuous. I find it just thrown in there just to like please whatever. And... I just feel like video games shouldn't be about that. This is a fantasy world, all right? I don't want these real life problems that are happening right now in this world. The one example that I want to give, I like the Borderlands series for the most part. Mm -hmm. Borderlands 2 is probably one of my most favorite games ever. I remember playing Borderlands 3 and playing it and thinking every single male in this game is a piece of trash on purpose. They're either stupid or they're evil or they're just like, they're painting them in this horrible light. And every single female character in that game is smart and powerful and strong and virtuous. And I'm like, give me a break. It was so in your face, this like feminism game. I was just like, okay. Me as a girl, I was like, this is making me feel ick. It's almost like I'm a girl, I'm not stupid. I know there's powerful girls in video games. There has been from the dawn of time. 
but don't make every single man rash. And it's always the women being like, oh, oh, this guy's so stupid. Or, oh, of course, we have to protect you, you stupid male. It was so cheesy. I thought that the end credits was a joke. Like Borderlands, Borderlands 3, Borderlands series is like comedy, like real comedy. And I thought like when that song came on at the end and what was happening, I was like, oh man, Claptrap, which is this like little robot in there. I'm like, he's going to come in here and like change the song and make it. And it was like, no, this is real. This is for really happening. It was so cheesy, so lame, so pandering. It made me want to puke. The, these are supposed to be an escape. You know, and especially if you're seeing things on the news or experiencing things, you kind of want to break from that when you're actually playing the game. And then kind of devil's advocate on that aspect is that when you have a story based games, a lot of times the story might mirror some realistic aspects and that's it mm -hmm. makes it a good, complete story uh, to play the devil advocate on that end. But then also on top of that, and this is something I've also found in movies, is uh, when it doesn't feel natural, when it feels forced, like you said, it feels disingenuous and it actually takes you out because now it's so in your face that you're not enjoying the content and is also not overly realistic. Um, hmm. You know, like I know it's not a video game, but I, I had these same thoughts um sometimes with movies or like some of the stuff that the mcu is doing right now with like thor and all that aspect is mm -hmm. we've had instances in movies in the past and in video games where you've had really badass female characters and not for a force agenda they just happen to be badass they earn their badass status through their actions yeah. uh, uh, standing alone as a badass but i feel a lot of times content right now they can't elevate a certain group, whether it's, uh, you know, a certain gender or a certain like race or ethnicity. It's like a lot of times they can't elevate that without bringing something else down. And I feel hmm. that is like the participation show that we were talking about. And like the playing field is it doesn't feel earned because you're basically saying that this, the group that, that, female character or whatever it is can't stand on their own they can't be elevated on their own as it is that you have to make the males uh dumb and you have to make them inferior in order for her to stand out where it was mm -hmm. like can't we make both characters yeah you know badasses and they should be able to still stand on their own i remember terminator sarah connor complete badass Guess what? Arnold was also a badass as a Terminator. They didn't make mm -hmm. him a dumb robot who couldn't do anything, you know. Right. But but she still stands out as the big badass of that movie, even over Terminator. Yeah. And she did it on her own merits. And I think that's where when it's forced like that, you you fail what you're actually trying to accomplish, which is legitimately elevating this type of character. And it becomes distracting and you're also like expecting it now. It's almost like, okay, well, this, I bet this is what's going to happen. And it's like, nothing's like surprising. It's like all just like shoved down your throat, regurgitated crap that they, you feel like they have to put in this game so that they just don't get any flack for whatever. I don't know why they have to like do it in their movies and video games and everything. But, and that's what I loved about uh, the mass effect series is yeah, there was balance. You had, Badass uh, males, badass females, badass aliens. Everyone had their own uh, great, in-depth, powerful characters, regardless of what they were. And they didn't have to, um, you know, nerf any of the other characters to make it. Also, in the world of Mass Effect, there were bad women, there were bad men. That that was all a balance. Like all the stupid people, there was a balance. All the bad people, there was a balance. It's completely it was like cohesive and every any everything like felt right together. There was no like one thing's better than the other. It was perfect. And now I feel like the farther we're going, it's like it's becoming more separate and segregated, where it's like there's too much many differences between they're like putting differences in these characters when it's like, no, we're supposed to be all unified but you're making us different you're segregating everybody 
And, and that's why it works. Why does it work in a game like Mass Effect? Because that's how it is in real life. Every every group or type has good and has bad versions. There yes. is no type or group where everyone's 100% of one thing. There's a yeah. whole scale of great person to a-hole on every single type of person. So yep. you need that balance. Agreed. I, I do have one more bad. Oh, okay. <laughs> I do have one more bad, which I think uh, any gamer will agree. This is a problem that I feel has really crept up over the last maybe five, seven years. It seems to be getting worse. And that is with developers releasing games before they are ready. There's so many games they release in what seems like the alpha version of the game. And then they have to do day one patch releases. They have to, a month or two into the game, fix all the stuff that was broken. And then they have to wait for the resurgence of trying to get their fans back. Like, hey, now it's good. Why do we have to wait six months for it to be good? I'd rather developer take that initial brunt that they're going to get by saying, hey, we're delaying this eight months. Then literally releasing a broken game that I now paid $60, $70 uh, for and is either unplayable or unenjoyable because the game is broken. And now I have to still wait months to little by little fix each and one of those things. So as games are becoming more expensive, their readiness seems to be going down at time to release. And mm -hmm. it's getting worse. It's so funny that you say that because one of my news, what they need to keep doing, I said prolonging release dates for video games. Because I know there's a lot of video games that people complain about, oh, the release date pushed back, the release date pushed back. I'm like, good, don't release it until you feel confident in the final product yourselves and for the people who are going to be purchasing it. So some people get mad at that and I'm with you. I'm like, no, 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 no. You prolong it for as long as you, we can wait. I'd rather a good finished product. I mean, there's going to be patches. There always is, but I'd rather a good, more clean finished product come out that I'm going to be happy-ish with at first than having something come out that's garbage and then they take it away from you to fix it. And then you're like, well, now it's tainted. I don't know now. Yeah, and, and a big example, uh, I mean, there's many examples, but a big one was what mm -hmm. happened with Cyberpunk. Uh, yes. So with Cyberpunk release, See, I got lucky I had a PS5 at that point. So I played it on PS5. So it was more playable than it was. It was unplayable in the old systems, uh, the PS4 and the regular Xbox. In the new, new gen, it was at least playable where the problems or the glitches were more like, oh my God, look at that guy's in a building or like in a tree. It's like, but it didn't really affect your gameplay. But I know for other people it was broken. And then that game released with so many issues that it took more than a year before it got to a really playable state. And then at that point, most people had given up on it overall. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. It actually was a good game. Like, it was a, so much good there. Like, I enjoy besides the glitches, I enjoyed the game. And there's so many people that will not get that experience because uh, it's tarnished. Just to be clear, I the blame of this falls on uh, the big developers and the companies uh, mm -hmm. that are doing these, not the people, not the little studios creating the games for the big no. uh, companies overall. They just mm -hmm. care about that initial buy, let people buy off the hype. It's a single player game anyway. We can't make extra money off of this after the fact. So just put it out there and get it through. And as long as people are still continuing to buy these games, we're going to keep getting that. We're going to yeah. keep getting these like incomplete games, because, especially with single-player story games, because the studios, my impression is they don't even want to make them anyway because it's a one-time payment, and then they can't make more money off of it. See, and I feel like there's a whole genre of video games that are just going to die because they're not going to make enough money for the companies. And it's the and it's the type of video games that we love. It's like that whole one time, one buy, not online game. It's just going to be gone. 
It's not looking good, Marie. It's not it's looking not good looking. at all. No, okay. So let's switch gears because now I'm getting depressed and we'll yeah. go for some do's. I just said my do, which was your don't. So you get to do a do now. Do the do. Okay. All right. Well, my next do uh, does actually go with your do that you just did on that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> which yours was, you know, uh, waiting on the games and all that aspect and games coming out broken. I think another thing you can add that to help people not get these broken games from the start and being able to judge better is we need to do more game demos i feel mm. most major games should have demos demos are so rare now i can remember i used to play demos and then off of that i'll decide like hey that i enjoy this and buy the game now they're because they know they release so many broken games is it seems like they're afraid to release game demos because they don't want people to be like, oh, no, I don't like this and not buy the game. They rather people buy it and then it's too late. So give me more game demos uh, and release them before the game comes out. Because I know yes. even some of the few demos that come out now, they come out after the game's release when people have already pre-ordered. But give me that taste, you know? I want to be walking through that Costco and the lady being like, hey, you want to try this new, you know, sesame chicken? I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I'll try some of that sesame chicken. Yeah. And I take a bite of the sesame chicken and I keep the toothpick in case some chicken gets stuck in my teeth. But I keep it in my hand and I'm like, mm, oh, my God, this is this is pretty good. Who made the sesame chicken again? That brand? All right. Uh, let me get all the boxes that you have. Thank you. That's what pretty I want simple. with my games. I don't want to be like, hey, here, look, at, here's this box of chicken. You should buy it. It is good. And then I buy it and it's horrible. No, let me taste. And then they recall the chicken and say, wait a second. It wasn't quite up to par. We got to fix this chicken. I swear it will be better next time. Guess what? You're not going to buy it next time because it left a bad taste in your mouth first time. And then I'm there. In the afterlife, after dying from the salmonella, very angry by the fact that they didn't let me taste the chicken beforehand before I bought it. Hear this, video game developers? Use <laughs> this Costco analogy. Take it to the bank. This is what the people Give me the want. taste. Give me a taste, okay? Let me taste this first before I get the whole meal. Okay, this is another good that I have that I think that... I view it much differently than like movies doing this, but I say bring on more video game redos and remakes. Don't change the story, but take old classic games that we like, redo the graphics and everything and re-release them. In the past, I would have been like, eh, I don't know. I don't know about that because my mindset in the past would be like, well, I already, I already beat the game. Like, why do I want to redo oh. it with the same story. That was my mindset in the past. Mm. Uh, Resident Evil has completely changed that for me. When they uh, redid part two, part three, and now part four, even though I beat the original so much, it's been such a great experience because they can, they can take all the good and put it in the new game. They can fix all the bad. The graphics are better and they can add their own yes. little tidbits to it that now I am 100% on board with this idea. Yes. See, I would just like Fallout New Vegas is one of my most favorite, well, is my most favorite video game ever. And if they redid that game, kept, even if they kept the gameplay and everything exactly the same, the leveling up, everything exactly the same, and just redid the graphics, I would cry. I would, I don't care how much it costs. Like I'd buy it. Like it would just, Think they should do that more can you imagine by like buying like punch out and it was like real graphic it was exactly the same game exactly the same everything combos and everything but it looked like in, in vr just fighting tyson oh. in vr get your ear bit in real life just yeah. like ah. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like uh, there's so many games from like the past that like I do love the retro style. I love like pixelated. Like, it doesn't bother me, but just to have that nostalgia revamped and make get like a makeover, I think they can make a lot of money with that. And I'd like to see it. I'd like to play it. I'd love. I'd love that. So remakes and redos in video games. I think good idea. Hear us. See, that's a, that's a slogan for this episode. Hear us.
Moving on to mine, I would say, and I touched on this a little bit before, give me more single-player story games. We don't really get a lot, and I know some of the big companies, I'm looking at you, EA, uh, overall seem hesitant to release single-player games because, again, it's a one-time influx of money once someone owns it. They're not making any more money off of it at all. You don't need to it because there's no competition aspect to it. You just play it. You can release the LCs, but that's also another like short influx of it. The Star Wars Fallen Order game that came out a few years ago. I remember there was barely any marketing for that game. It was a single player Star Wars game. You would think with the fan base that Star Wars had, you really want to push it out there. But there was barely any marketing. There's rumors going around and I believe it that EA wanted this game to fail. So that if it failed, they can say, you see, this is why we don't make single player games. People don't buy them. It doesn't make much game. So their marketing really wasn't very good considering the the uh, the IP that they're using to make this. You know, they wanted to do their like Battlefront, which people have to buy mm. loot boxes and season passes yes. and keep making money. Except it didn't work because the game was so good, made so good by the studio that people loved it and word of mouth spread and the game became a really good seller to the point that then they had to approve a sequel. But that's the attitude that I feel these studios have where they're hesitant to make these really good story games because they don't consider it a worthwhile uh, investment towards their yeah. overall profit. And we lose out on that. Just think how many good single-player story games we had growing up. And now how often you have to wait to get a uh, Red Dead Redemption, a Last of Us, a Ghost of Tosh uh, Toshima. You know, you have to wait these long periods of time to get a really good story game. They don't care about the people anymore. They don't care about us. They don't care about us like video game players been playing all our lives now we're just getting old and they're like who cares about you we're focusing on the young generation it's like we made you what you are man yeah we got you here give us our story-based adventure games that are offline we made you oh no i hopefully it changes because uh again with the success of the fallen order you know last of us now with the tv show has brought more success, so the video game actually is selling even more, even though it was already a good seller. Um, yes. Red Dead was hype for a long time. So maybe if they keep seeing that these games, there is an audience, there's a high success rate for them if done well. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll get more, maybe that will change. But if it does, I don't think it's going to come from a company like EA. It's going to come mm. from other companies. It's funny because my last do that I have is... Keep giving us deep, heartfelt, painful, I don't care, engrossing video game stories. Because like the, the success of the right? With the success of The Last of Us, especially, it's like, look how maybe you don't market off the video game with constant season passes and making money completely off the game, but you can make money in other ways. You can do graphic novels, you can have TV shows, you can have movies, and you can market it that way. And you can only do that if you have a really good storyline, like a really good storyline. So like, instead of focusing so hard and just making like microtransactions and crap with a game where it's just your first person shooting and you're going to get a different skin or whatever, think about like the big picture. Like, wait, how can we take a, this great story, put it in the game, and then market it in all these different branches of entertainment? Like, to me, that's like, that's what you should be doing, especially look at The Last of Us. Like, come on. And look at the Super Mario movie now, like, God. Like, yeah. you could be, like, forever marketing off this game for years to come if it's good and has a good storyline. Mario doesn't have a good storyline, but that's just nostalgia. But speaking of, like, The Last of Us, I mean, come on now. I want my game to make me feel, you know, oh, yeah. make me be stressed out for almost two days and have my game on pause over a decision that I had to make because I want both characters to live. That's, that was my Spider-Man moment where it was like, do I save the people? Or do I save Mary Jane? Like here, 
like give me that because now I'm not just playing a game. I'm having an experience where it's like now my own personal uh, feelings and empathy and thought process is now coming into play when making this decision. It's not just point, click, shoot, point, click, shoot. It's like now I'm having to really think and, and feel. Like, mm. you know, I remember at the end of Red Dead, certain thing happens. And I remember I had a positive game. I was like, oh, man, man, F you, whoever wrote this. Like, why, why you got to do this to me? Like, I want that. Like, make me feel angry. Well, don't make me feel angry at dumb AIs or glitches or anything like that. Make me feel angry about what someone did to my character within the story. And I want that revenge. And it's funny because we're like, you know what? Don't bring real life stuff into this game. It's an escape. But then we're like, hey, make me feel and make me have pain. It's different, <laughs> though, because... But it's different because it's not real life pain. It's not real life stuff that we deal with every single day. It's something new and it's something we may you can feel feelings in a video game that you don't feel normally. And you know it's not real. So it's like you're feeling it, but with like without consequence, really. You're just like, oh, it's just I feel it so much. Then it gets like, oh, turn off the game and it's all it's all right. Go back to reality, whatever, and come back. And it's like you're passionate about it. I think the difference there is like so when when they do it right and you're feeling something because of the story with it compared to bringing in like real life and politics yeah. difference is, is that what you're feeling in something like the red dead or some of those story is more empathy for the characters and their stuff compared to when they bring maybe some of that political stuff or the other things that you're experiencing in real life is you're feeling your own stuff. Now you're not escaping. This is, it's yes. not about the character. Is about what you and your real life is experiencing. That's not what I want to feel. I want to have all the feelings because I feel for that character, the empathy for that character's situation. That's a different type of emotion. Well said. <laughs> well, I guess we got my last one. And this is something which I, I feel like we're heading this way. So this might be one where it was like, if we were to do this episode in the future, this might be off the list in a way. Ooh is more cross-play uh, options. I know there's capabilities, but it comes down to the politics between uh, companies, and that's really what's preventing it. But it's like across different systems, you don't have that cross-play. And a lot of times you don't have cross-play within systems ecosystem. So, you know, PlayStation 5 playing with PlayStation 4 uh, people, you don't have that cross-play overall. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, give me that. I want to be able to just because, like, a friend of mine has an Xbox or they're just a PC player, I can't play with them because I'm a PlayStation 5 person. Even though we yeah. both bought the same game that's from mm -hmm. the same uh, distributor and the same, like, company, why can't we play across unless we have the exact same system? You're missing out on the opportunity there. Because there's people who would only like to play certain games if they can play with their friends. But if their yeah. system doesn't match their friends, guess what? They're probably not going to buy that game because they can't play with their friends. So you just lost out on someone there. Yeah, but guess what? That's why they're trying to force you to buy a whole entire console. That's what it is. Like, this is the thing. My brother and I, he really wants to get play uh, we, we play on xbox and he's like oh i want to get the playstation 5 instead but we the reason why we're just on xbox so we can play together everything because he doesn't live here and that's how we hang out but now it's like okay well i just i guess i'm gonna have to buy both eventually so i can play with all the people that i don't get to hang out with it's not fair but it's again i think it's all greed most of these problems you know besides like the dumb ai uh but most of these problems <laughs> It comes down to, to that. It comes down to them uh, putting uh, the highest profit margin possible ahead of quality, doing what's best for the fan and the fan's enjoyment. That all is secondary to the bottom line of these companies. If they can do something that's going to inconvenience the fan base, but add an extra $30 million to their financing, 
they're going to sacrifice the fan in order to get that extra 30 million to add to the, you know, 10 billion that they made in that year. It makes me sad. It's a shame. We were supposed to end on a good note. Uh, I know, right? <laughs> wait, wait. The positive is I feel that's something I, I'm seeing signs of we're kind of going there uh, yeah. and, we're, and we're getting there overall. Uh, like I think of the new the newest Madden, there's a rumor that they might be cross play eligible between like PC and the systems because the PC mm. uh, player base is so small, they get neglected uh, yeah. and they don't really have people to play with. So there, I'm seeing signs of maybe that will become the norm and maybe these companies will start kind of just working together uh, overall for the sake of us. But that might be wishful thinking, but that's the positive note. We're seeing signs. We're seeing the signs, Jose. We're seeing positive. Thank you for watching another episode of Marie Plays It All. This was an episode of SideQuest with Jose. Damn it, Ashley Jose. That's me. Damn it, Ashley. You can find me at This Is Me Nombre on Instagram. You can find more of our content on our YouTube channel, Not A Strong Start. And you can follow us on IG and Twitter at Not A Strong Start. And you can listen to us anywhere you listen to your podcast. You can follow me on Instagram at Marie Plays It All. I almost want to change mine to season pass my ass because I hate you season tosses. I hate you. Speaking of, uh, we will be releasing the Nas uh, season pass next month. If you mm. guys want to. <laughs> yeah, we'll have different seasons every like three months where you can get new Marie skins, new Jose skins, new Daniel skins. Maybe we'll get some like new maps behind us. We'll get some new backgrounds. We'll get some loot boxes. <laughs> And, and and it's all authentic, 100% human skin, so you will not be chipped. I have a bunch of human skin in my closet. I'll just go get it and ship it out to peeps. <laughs> and don't forget, Jose, to never stop playing, even when Ashley is pissing you off. Never stop supporting good single-player story games. Let them know that this is what we want and this is what we need. Give us a taste first. Just, you know, a little bit, and then let us have it. Give it to us straight up Costco styles, baby. Damn it, Ashley.